to Acadia National Park, where the highlights are our trip to downtown Bar Harbor, Thunder Hole, and Otter Cliff. Thunder Hole and Otter Cliff are located within Acadia National Park. There are a few other stops that we made along the way from the lighthouse to downtown Bar Harbor and then eventually Acadia. Some of those stops included the Mount Desert Island Historical Society. We were driving along and I saw this beautiful arched bridge and I said, Brandon, you have to stop. I have to capture that. And then there was just a little pullover location where this harbor was located and these boats were scattered about and it just felt like a moment I also needed to capture. So I was really enjoying just living in the moment and when I saw something beautiful, taking a minute to stop, capture it, and then go on with the rest of our day. In preparation for our trip to Acadia, I ended up finding the Maine Foliage Report, which is put out by the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. I don't think I had ever seen this report prior to finding it recently, but I did find it very helpful. I followed along with this report in the weeks leading up to our trip to Acadia, and I was able to watch as the Bar Harbor region went from very low foliage to low foliage and then to moderate foliage the week that we visited. Though we were not able to time our trip so that it coincided with the foliage being considered high or at its peak, I find that this moderate foliage was absolutely gorgeous as well. I really loved the sprinkling of the different colors of fall mixed in with the greens that were still heavily present. So while high or peak foliage may be some people's target, I would recommend moderate foliage as well. I was very captivated by this scene. I had to stop, see it for myself, take a little walk across the bridge. I can envision people maybe even on their wedding day taking pictures here. It's a beautiful little spot. needed to make a trip to downtown Bar Harbor in the morning because we forgot Colin's shoes. So in our efforts to have everything prepped and ready to go for the next day, we thought almost everything through. I had the kids just wear some warmer PJs when they went to bed the night before so that we could bring them to the car in their PJs and take off and get them dressed once we got to the lighthouse. And all of that went pretty smoothly, except for the fact where I didn't think about Colin's shoes. 
It would have happened that Eli and Charlie didn't have any shoes as well, but they woke up enough in the process of getting them to the car, which I really didn't want to happen, but now I'm thankful that it did happen because as they got themselves woken up, they thought to put shoes on their feet before they went out the door. Colin being littler, we were able to keep him mostly asleep. asleep. We just put him into his car seat, strapped him in. He had footy PJs on. Everything was great until we got to the lighthouse and Colin was getting dressed and he said, wait, where are my shoes? And I had that moment of panic because I had put so much effort into prepping for this trip that I thought, no, I did not forget his shoes. But yes, yes, I did. So we had to make a stop and find him some shoes. And ultimately, there they are, his little crab shoes or lobster shoes. It's up for debate, which they are. But we made the stop. I found them. They're technically water shoes. They cost a whopping $5 because they were clearanced out due to, be, due to it being the end of the season. So all in all, I think that we made the best of the mistake and it really wasn't all that big of a mistake in the end. Over here! Hank! 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 
puppy. It's like, I don't know where they are. Here are our first glimpses of Thunder Hole. It is an absolutely beautiful location. The watercolor is so vibrant. We really tried to time our stop at Thunder Hole so that we would see the big sprays of water that some others get to see and that this area is commonly associated with. But ultimately, this tie just didn't produce that effect. I overheard a gentleman who was visiting at the same time that we were saying that he had learned some tides don't have the same effect as other tides, even when they are both high tides nice or low tides or what have you. So I am i haven't put any effort into researching that, but he was an older gentleman, which led me to believe him. He wasn't actually even talking to me. I just was eavesdropping. I don't know, it was a public setting. He was talking loudly. I'm gonna say I wasn't eavesdropping. I'm gonna say I just heard him because eavesdropping seems like it has an inherently negative connotation. So anyway, I heard him talking to another gentleman who was talking about how he wanted to see the big sprays of water. And so the original gentleman I spoke about just said, I learned that not all tides produce the same effects. So that's what I'm going with. And that's why I think that we didn't see any huge action on this day at Thunder Hole. I know, I want some big waves to come too. What? Not right now. Just for fun, what's your vote? Are these crabs or lobsters? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, there's more movement than when we got here. Hank. Hank, yes. <coughs> oh my goodness, Papa. <laughs> Hank, yes. Oh, hi, Papa. Hi, Papa.
I was really intrigued by the jaggedness of the rocks in this location. I don't entirely know what causes it, but I found myself spending a good amount of time wondering about it. Really, I should probably just put in the effort to find out why, since I spent so much time wondering about it. But what I did do in the moment was capture the jagged rocks so that I can always look back on them, I guess. What's going on with your ears?
take you there If I'm gonna love somebody, I just wanna love you If I'm gonna love somebody, I just wanna love you If I'm gonna love somebody, I just wanna love you If I'm gonna love somebody, I just wanna love you Oh, oh, I just wanna love you, right? Oh, oh Part of my interest in nature and just everything that's around me is noticing lots of little details that some might overlook and so I found this buoy that was wedged in between these rocks and I had to put my hands on it and try to get it out because that's what um, that's what I felt like I had to do. It was very wedged in there though and was not coming out. <laughs> this little flower that had the stamina to grow amongst all of these rocks really captivated me and so it got featured a couple of times in this video. Bless you, Colin. side of the ledges it just all was coming together to create a perfect moment for me
since we had the kids with us and Hank and Melt met our needs. So that is where we chose to get lunch from. We got these loaded fries that are so loaded you can barely tell there are fries underneath. I also got their mac and cheese melt. Brandon got their buffalo chicken melt. We found all of it to be delectable. And then we did grab dessert from them. Oh my gosh, was it heaven in my mouth. I will wait to tell you any more about that until you actually see it though. Hi, Pink is being really good. Hi, Pink. Hi, Pink. Hi, And drum roll please, here is that dessert. Oh my, oh my gosh, so good. Don't remember the name of it. Cream cheese, blueberries, and cinnamon sugar coming together to create this perfect concoction. Thank you so much for coming along during part two of our trip to Acadia National Park and stay tuned to my channel for part three coming soon.